So Dylan White has finally broken his silence regarding this Tyson Fury fight. He posted a training montage on his Twitter account and said that he's looking forward to seeing everybody on April 23rd at Wembley Stadium. Hashtag let's go. So this is the video in question. I'm not going to play it. I'm just going to scroll through and talk about a couple of things. Now, it looks as though Dylan White is in good shape, although these shots are very tight. You can't see, uh, you know, a, a full length shot of him here. So it's difficult to know exactly what kind of shape he's in. He looks in good shape, obviously, just judging by his face and his arms and whatever. But we won't know. We won't be able to make any kind of accurate guess based upon just this training footage. Because again, the shots are very tight and you don't really see a full length picture of him in at any point here. You got Dean in the background there, <laughs> looking on as Dylan White works hard over there in Portugal. You know, one of the strangest theories about me uh, that I've heard over the past few years is that I am Dean White. <laughs> I don't know where people come up with this stuff. I had to mention it, you know, now that I'm talking about Dean for a second. There were some people claim, and I'm, talk I'm telling you, they were, they were turning up in the comment section of my videos, and there were some people in Facebook groups and where because people were sending me screenshots in my Discord at the time and now in my Element group. People were sending me screenshots saying, oh, people are saying this and that and they're saying that you're Dean White. And it's like, I don't sound anything like Dean White. Where do people come up with this stuff? It's bizarre, completely bizarre. And of course, the other bizarre one, which was going around for ages, which people seem to adamantly believe, is that I'd been arrested I think sometime last year they were saying, oh my God, did you hear that Hatman got arrested on the train for not wearing a mask? It's like, what? <laughs> I haven't taken a train in years. I haven't been on public transport in years. I refused to wear a mask for the past two years. That much is true. And I did get confronted by the police once in a supermarket, but I didn't get arrested. I didn't even get fined. I stood my ground and it was what it was. But in terms of me getting, you know, arrested and <laughs> all this stuff, and, and there was somebody who said that, oh, Hatman's broke because he got arrested by the police. What? How does that work? I mean, what, what kind of charges did they hit me with that I needed to pay my brief that much money that I'd be broke? <laughs> bizarre. Anyway, let me, let me not get sidetracked with these bizarre theories that I hear people come up with and post in the comments of my videos. Uh, anyway, yeah, Dean White, who is not me, right? We are two separate people and no idea why people would think I'm him or he's me. Uh, he looks on there in the background, the hulking figure of, of the enormous Dean White looking on his Dylan White trains hard. And yes, I'm aware that he's not really Dylan White's brother. I was one of the first people to actually say this. I know Dean White's real name and his real name, if you're talking about his birth name is not. Lamar Scott. That's not his birth name. Okay. I don't want to beat up the man's business here, but his real name is actually Dean. That's what I'll tell you. His, his real first name is actually Dean. His surname is certainly not Scott and it's certainly not white. I do know what it is. If he wants to tell you what it is, that's his business, but he changed his name for a reason. I'll leave it at that. Okay. But his, his real surname is not Scott. His birth surname. Anyway, moving on <laughs> from that, that trivia. So here we have Dylan White training hard. Uh, do we see him hitting anything in this video? I don't think we do. He's just doing all this, you know, circuit type training, lifting weights, uh, doing a lot of push-ups. If you can call these push-ups, you know, what are those? I guess you call them a type of push-up, right? But I never used to do these kind of, I'd only do the push-ups that were like full push-ups, you know, like a bench press where you put, lock your arms out all the way. But perhaps there's a benefit to doing these types of push-ups. Maybe some of you fitness guys out there can tell me what the benefits might be. Uh, what else we got here? Yeah, Dylan White using the sledgehammer. I know that Ernie Shavers used to like chopping wood because he was asked what made him such a big puncher and he said he used to chop wood. And I also, I think he also was one of the people that used to hit big tires with a hammer. He might have been one of the pioneers with regards to that also, or at least one of the people that popularized that practice in boxing, at least. 
So yeah, medicine ball, usual stuff. What do they call that thing? I've started using that thing at the, at the gym. The sledge, is that what they call it? That thing that you push along the ground? I quite like that. It's good for explosive training. He's there pulling it along. Again, he's on some type of machine there. Is it a cross? What do they call it? A CrossFit machine? You know, the one with the handles and the... the I don't go to fitness gyms and, and whatever. I go to boxing gyms, so I don't know what these things are called. But if in this picture here, Dylan White looks in good shape. But again, he's wearing a t-shirt, so you can't tell what's going on underneath there. We won't know until the weigh-in exactly what kind of shape he's in. But give me your guesses. You know, a bit of fun. Do you reckon Dylan White is going to come in 250 pound plus or actually under 250 pounds? And to give you some context, he was under 250, certainly for at least one of the Chisora fights. He was like 240 something. He was under 250 against AJ. Um, he was quite heavy against Parker. I think he was like 250 something or 260 against Parker. Just thinking off the top of my head. But it's not beyond the realms of possibility for Dylan White to be under 250, to be in the high 240s. Will he even be lighter than that here? Now that he's finally got his world title shot and he's been training like crazy, will he actually come in in the low 240s? And if he does, is that too light? Will he need to be heavier? Is it going to be better for Dylan White to be closer to 250 or closer to 240? I mean, a really bizarre thing would be if he came in under 240. <laughs> he has been as light as, I guess, the low 230s very early on in his career when he actually had a six pack. Uh, but since then, no, we haven't seen him anywhere near that light. So yeah, let's have some fun and speculate about his weight. Me personally, I'm not going to go there right now. I need to see more footage, um, full length shots and stuff like that to get a better idea. But you guys, you know, have some fun and speculate. He's doing his push-ups there. Now, <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny or disrespectful or anything like that, but this guy looks a bit like who does he look like in the face, this guy? Does he look a bit like, no, not, not Carlton Palmer. Um, who does this guy look like, bro? He, he, he reminds me of someone in the face. Is it George Arias? He looks a little bit like George Arias, the American Dominican heavyweight. There are two active George Ariases at heavyweight. One of them is a Brazilian guy, a journeyman. That's not the one I'm talking about. The other one, is a Dominican American heavyweight. And he looks like this guy in the face. <laughs> if I can get a still shot of this guy, a you know, still frame, you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, also looks a little bit like Greg Page. Greg Page, uh, George Arias. I was going to say, he even looks a little bit like Katie Price's son Harvey in the face. <laughs> no disrespect. I mean, not, none at all, but I'm just saying. There is a little bit of a resemblance there. Anyway, random. Okay, there they, you can see him a little bit better. You know, you see what I'm talking about. Harvey, uh, Greg Page a tiny bit. Not that much Greg Page though, but more, more George Arias. He looks like George Arias in the face, this guy. Huh? He does look like George Arias there. Not sure who he is. Maybe he's some heavyweight who won't take kindly to me speculating about who he resembles. <laughs> uh, let's move on to the end of the video here. But, uh, you know, they're filming this guy, so he must be somebody, right? Or else why would they put a camera on him? He must be some. I'm sure one of you guys will be telling me in the comments, saying, no, he's actually a fighter and he's one of Dylan White's fighters and rare tear tear. So uh, anyway, we've reached the end of the video. Let me know what you guys think about this Little clip, Dylan White doing the bare minimum to fulfill his promotional obligations. Because again, as per Dylan White's lawyer, the WBC contract doesn't specify exactly what constitutes making a reasonable effort to promote the fight. So it's open to interpretation. And so Dylan White has released this one video and I'm sure he'll turn up on fight week, perhaps do a press conference or two press conferences and turn up for the weigh-in. And that's it done. He has been concentrating on getting himself ready. And, you know, all the stuff Frank Warren's been saying about the, you know, Dylan White not participating in 
the promotion is not going to affect the pay-per-view buys, well, that's all BS, isn't it? If Dylan White was participating, it would obviously increase the pay-per-view buys. I'm not saying the pay-per-view buys are going to be bad, but they'd be even better than whatever they are going to be if Dylan White had spent more time promoting the fight. And that's why Frank Warren's mad. All this stuff about, oh, Dylan White, you know, legacy and blah, blah, all a load of rubbish. Frank Warren is upset with Dylan White because he thinks that him not participating in the promotion is going to affect his bottom line. And he's forked out an enormous amount of money for this fight. <laughs> an enormous amount of money. Biggest fight he's ever put on. So that's why he's mad. Uh, but yeah, you know, as far as us fans are concerned, it's all fun and games. And hopefully we get a good fight out of it. You know, there have been so many fights where the build-up has been great, but a fight turned out to be a dud. Then there's been other fights where the build-up has been very low-key and the fight turned out to be a classic. Let's hope for the latter. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you're tired of the biased narratives and mass censorship on mainstream platforms and you want to be part of a community of critical thinkers who love free speech just as much as you do, then come and join me on Patreon and access my weekly no holds barred censorship free podcast where we lift the lid on a wide variety of controversial topics. It's not mainstream friendly. It's not politically correct. But that's the whole point. We dare to stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. Just head on over to my Patreon page and select the tier called Hatman Hot Topics. You'll gain access to a minimum of two hours of exclusive content every single week, including podcasts, videos, interviews, live stream Q&As, as well as my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. Not to mention a vast back catalog of hundreds of hours of previous episodes. You can listen via the Patreon app with the option to download in high quality MP3. We've also got an element group where you can come and chat and hang out with myself and other members. Unlike Discord, it has full end-to-end -end encryption, is decentralized, and is 100% censorship free. You can also send voice notes as well as much larger audio and video files than you can on Discord. So come and sign up on Patreon. There's no contract. There's no commitment. You can cancel at any time and it's cheaper than a cup of coffee. So I'll see you over there. I'm out.